Whatever it is you're going through right now that seems volcanic, whatever has been making you volatile, or currently whatever is making you volatile at right now, like whatever is coming up for you right now that is really pushing your buttons, that is triggering you hard body, there's a method to that. There's a method to the madness. There's a strategy behind it because it is influencing you to cultivate this caring connection with yourself. Hello everyone, welcome to Morning Coffee. Thank you all so very much for tuning in. So, this is going to be your general energy reading for your moment, for your day, whenever you're guided to watch this reading. Yes, please keep in mind it's a general reading, so please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. Also, this is fairly a fairly timeless reading, yeah? So whenever you're guided to watch this reading and it resonates, then that's the message for you in that moment. Um, one thing that I've mean, been meaning to mention to the collective is that uh, if if there's any ever like a day or a, a span of days in which we don't have a fresh pot of morning coffee to sip on, um, then I highly recommend that you check out the playlist. Link can be found up the top right of your screen, um, also in the description box below and in the pinned comment below. Um, there are over 500 videos. Like, it blew my mind when I recognized how many, um, how many episodes of Morning Coffee there are. There are literally over 500 episodes of Morning Coffee in that playlist that span over two, I want to say it's, it's obviously over a year's worth. It's about, I want to say almost like two years worth of morning coffee. So if there, ever, if there ever isn't a new, a fresh morning coffee um, available and you are looking for guidance, check that playlist and make sure that you pay attention to the titles, okay? Obviously, the dates from like two years ago are not going to be relevant to you now, but the titles of those videos, of those readings will be, okay? So scroll through them. Allow your intuition to speak to speak to you. Whichever one catches your eye, whichever one you feel is right for you in that moment, watch it, okay? That's the beauty of this. Even though, you know, these could be, especially when I first started doing them, you know, they could be dated or, or relevant for that date, but it doesn't have to be that way, all right? These are all timeless readings. So I highly recommend you guys check that out. Um... Last little tidbit before I get started, even though this is kind of part of the message. So, um, yeah, but the last little tidbit that I want to say before we move forward to get into the actual reading for the collective is um, yesterday I channeled a message from Spirit that turned into a reading, but it started with a song. And it's uh, a song by Paula Abdul off of her Spellbound album that came out in the early 90s. Um, and the song is a prom The Promise of a New Day. And um, it was really beautiful. I mean, it, me being the, you know, the 90s kid that I am, I was born in 87, but I grew up, my like, the big bulk of my childhood was in the 90s. In the 90s and the 2000s. But, um... You know, be, me being the person that I am, I'm not surprised that this song came up because it's one of my favorite songs from being a kid. Um, I really loved that album. I was a huge Paula Abdul fan when I was really, really young. Huge Paula Abdul fan. And um, so, and Spellbound was actually the only album of hers that I ever actually owned because I was really young at the time. My parents bought it. They didn't buy the other ones, but like, whatever. Um... But this song is relevant to me in my life, sure, because it's one of my favorite songs, but it's also super relevant to what the collective is going through right now. And this is all having to do with the Lionsgate portal that we just crossed over into. Um, it's a really beautiful message. The reading that I did for it is on Patreon. Um, and if you're not on Patreon, if you're not, if you're not part of the, our little piece of the collective there, then I highly recommend that you check it out. Um, there's a lot, of, I mean, that first of all, that's a really great way to support me and support the channel here. But then also, um, it's a, it, there's a lot of extra, really wonderful extra content that comes out throughout the month. 
um, over on Patreon, yeah? The link to my Patreon account can be found in the description box below. Um, but, uh, oh, and, and, and just so you guys are aware, if you're interested in getting involved with Patreon, you're going to be charged twice. But wait a second. You are going to be charged initially for the backlog of videos that are going to be available to you once you join. Regardless as to whatever tier you join in, if that message or if that video is for that tier, you will have access to it, okay? And there's over, and like I've been working with Patreon for over a year now, so there's a ton of stuff over there. So you're gonna be charged initially for the backlog and then you will be charged for your month. So like say you get in on it now, you're only going to be charged initially now, but then you'll be charged again when the next month comes around. I just wanted to make that very clear for anyone that's interested in joining Patreon. But but that reading is over on Patreon. It was a really excellent reading. The synchronicities involved with that, um, as I was even trying to find the space, because I went out to the beach and did a reading, the, the, the synchronicities involved with that only solidified the messages that were coming through. And this is a really beautiful time for us in the collective for those of us that have really been doing this work to find ourselves we're we're about to be really incredibly rewarded um and it all has to do with finding this sense of union within i mean that has been the big message for the collective for months through multiple readers okay union is here and yes it could represent union between you and another person but ultimately that union is found within yourself first really is found within yourself first obviously there are some relationship aspects that are going to be expanded on that are going to be able to grow that are going to be able to flourish uh interpersonal relationships for some people out there because i i am realizing that a lot of people are finding this or at least a lot of people are in a phase in this progression, right, in which they are learning, still learning a lot through interpersonal relationships. And then there are others, others of us that have either ex, uh, uh, moved past that or are taking a completely different route. And instead of finding this level of union within through interactions with other people, we're finding union within in terms of by interacting with ourselves. And that's how I'm doing it. That's how I've been resonating with it. Spending a lot of time alone, a lot of time in solitude, uh, and connecting with myself. I'm sorry, hold on a second. <laughs> sorry guys, I'm having a little bit of allergy troubles at the moment because I, um, I put on one of my sweatshirts that's been sitting in my closet for a long time, and it obviously needs to be washed because it was covered in like some sort of pollen or maybe some sort of like mold or something. And as soon as I put it on, my face exploded and then I took it and then I was like, wait a second, why is this happening? Oh wait, it happened as soon as I put this sweatshirt on. Ugh. So I took the sweatshirt off and the sneezing stopped, but my body is still kind of like, nah, 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 nah. you know what I mean? So I, have, <laughs> so I have to deal with it a little bit. Anyway, so what I was saying was, and I want I do want to talk a little bit about this obviously i'm not going to get into the bulk of what that reading came what that reading came through with i highly recommend if you want to check it out join us over on patreon but what's going on for the collective right now and again this is not just being channeled by me there are plenty of other readers that are getting the same information albeit our interpretations are individual and unique to us right okay but there's definitely a level of finding union within that is allowing us to really, to be really launched forward in our lives, in our experiences, in our manifestation, in our careers, whatever it is your personal focus is, that is in tune with your higher self and your higher mission. We are really being launched forward through the energies of this portal by finding union within ourselves, okay? And also finding union with other people, right? <laughs> For me personally, this has translated into me spending a lot of time alone and it's really spending the time with myself and reparenting myself and finding that union dynamic between the masculine and the feminine energies within me, but then also adding my inner child into that. So you could even, and this is what I said, I even said this in the reading, you could see this as a representation of the Holy Trinity, 
right? Uh, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, or the Mother, the Father, and the Child, or the, 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 um, the mind, body, and spirit. Okay, the mind being the masculine, the body being the feminine, the child or the spirit being the child. So um, it's a really beautiful energy and it's a really beautiful time. And um, it definitely is, it definitely does feel like the promise of a new day or a, a new reality, a new, a new vision. Um, and that all comes from you being able to have that balance within you all right it's so freaking beautiful so that reading is over on patreon if you're a patreoner and you haven't gotten a chance to check it out yet check it out um it's only it's it's only available for like the inner balance package and the uh the full monty um i'm really uh, this is a total sidebar you guys but i'm really having i'm having personal difficulty with this whole like tier thing and this whole exclusivity t thing, like, part of my journey or part of what has come up for me during this process of finding this, this recent level of balance and union within myself and finding this level of like 5D consciousness and unconditional love, unconditionally loving consciousness and want, like really focusing on stepping into my personal mission, I have grown increasingly uncomfortable with the idea of exclusivity. So like the whole idea of Patreon, as it's currently structured for me, at least right now, I have the love package, the inner balance package, and then the full Monty package. And the, the love balance is different, is segregated from, the, in, from the, the inner balance package, which is segregated from the love package. And then you have the, and then that's also, then the, the inner balance package is also segregated from the full Monty, in which in the full Monty, you get access to everything that goes up on Patreon. But as I've been going through this recent process, the idea of exclusivity, the idea of saying, well, only this group of people can see this message and only this group of people can see this message. And if you're in this group here, you get all the messages. That to me is kind of almost counterintuitive because the more I step into this personal mission, the more I want my, the messages that come through me and the channeling that I do and all that, and the, and the, and the I want everyone to have access to that. You know what I mean? But at the same time, bills need to be paid. <laughs> and unfortunately, and, and, and as it stands right now, we're just not at the level on YouTube where it's like, okay, well I can just do what the fuck ever, put this message out here, this, that, and the third, or these few messages out here and everything's gonna be cool. And like, I mean, I wish it were like that. It's just not like that yet, at least at this current moment. It, we could definitely get there. That's what we're planning on getting to. But like, you know, that was a total sidebar. I don't even know what I'm gonna do with that. Um, but I have been learning to go with the flow, keep aware of what it is I'm feeling, but then instead of freaking out about it or instead of forcing myself to find a solution, I'm taking notice of those feelings and, and, and letting them sit on the back burner to simmer um, and setting an intention to have something, some sort of solution figured out and surrendering that process to spirit, okay? Because spirit has more... Is, is, is better at that than we could be consciously. Like, I don't, I'm not trying to force myself to figure it out. I'm consciously aware of how it is I feel about it and I'm continuing to move forward. But if there's a better solution, I'm allowing spirit to bring it forward to me. And that's a part of this, yeah, the challenge of this Lionsgate portal. It's about a lot of what we've been dealing with as a collective has been in the form of surrender. Surrendering to spirit, surrendering to your higher self, surrendering to the universe, being the individual that you are and holding your individual vision or holding your individual mission, right? But allowing yourself to be moved by the universe, to flow with the universe in order to allow the manifestations to happen. Because remember, we are not solely creating for ourselves in this situation. We are co-creating with the universe. And we talked about that in one of the readings that I did recently. It actually, it was during the Lionsgate live stream this past Saturday. 
um, we briefly touched on the fact that a lot of us have been, actually I believe it was in the first message that came through in that session, a lot of us have been missing opportunities or have missing our have been missing our manifestations because we haven't been allowing ourselves to flow with the universe. We've been putting up too much resistance because it has to look a certain way or it has to come from a certain person or it has to come from a, come in a certain time frame, this, that, and the third, conditions. We're putting too many conditions on it and we have to learn to release those conditions, release how things actually happen, release the time frame, release the people that are involved, this, that, and the third, and just hold on to the vision. Hold on to ultimately where it is we want to go or what it is we want to achieve and then surrender that to the universe to allow it to come to us in the best way possible to serve our highest good, but not only to serve our highest good, <laughs> our highest good, to serve the highest good of all involved. Because remember, we are co-creating with the universe and from this three dimensional point of view, we really don't see the whole picture. Okay. Okay, let me handle my nose. Hold on. Yeah, I really need to throw that sweatshirt that I had on um, into the laundry because it was like it was a, like like clock, clockwork, you guys. Immediately, as soon as I put that sweatshirt on, my face started to explode. I started to sneeze like crazy, and then I immediately after I took it off, the sneezing stopped. But of course, now I'm dealing with the residual. <laughs> All right, guys. Anyway, let's get into the to this reading here. Um, I just want to do. Oh, also, last thing that I want to say before um, we get for, we move forward. Uh, we're about to have a storm here in Puerto Rico um, uh, between today, Tuesday, and tomorrow, Wednesday. Uh, we're gonna be there's a, gonna be a system, a tropical depression that's gonna be moving through. It's not officially a hurricane, at least not yet. I don't know. Um, I mean, it, I, I'm not. I'm, I'm not sure it's going to develop into a hurricane. However, it's a it's a rainstorm. It's going to bring a hell of a lot of rain, and probably some thunder and lightning. Well, you can't have thunder without the lightning. But um, so, and act, and unfortunately, it, it it looks like the the southeast tip of the island, which is where I am, is going to get a lot of that rain. Probably the brunt of it. So um, because of that, I wanted to make sure that I, I came through and at least got this morning coffee done for the collective because of all the rain and the wind and the, and the, and the lightning um, and the flooding, I may lose power. So I just wanted to put that out there. Um, I wanted to get this last message in before all hell breaks loose. Yes? Excellent. All right, kids, let's get into this here. Um, uh, let me light some more sage. Uh, yeah, so let's get into this. And, and I don't really have anything specific I want to talk about. You know, we've been talking about this Lionsgate portal for weeks. <laughs> so I just want to pull a message, a general message for the collective, whatever the collective needs to hear at this moment. It could be, re it could resonate with, or it could be um, associated with what you're going through right now through this shift with the Lionsgate portal. I am feeling that, but I, I don't have really any intention other than bringing the collective what messages they need to hear at the moment. Yes? Coolio, yo. Let's get into this and see what we've got for the collective. Here we go. Hi, spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve their highest good and the highest good of all involved. Please give us clear and accurate representation of the energies in terms of the situations, situationships, romances, places, relationships, and circumstances in which we all need it the most. Thank you so very much, Spirit. Okay. One last time. <sighs> okay. We're good. All right, kids, let's get into this. So I was actually being called to work with the uh, the energy, no, 
Yes, the Energy Oracle deck today. Yeah, for our main deck. And obviously then we'll get into two two row. Yeah, so that was one. We're gonna give this five shuffles. This is two. This is three. So what messages do we have for the collective at this time, please, Spirit? Uh, there's definitely some emotional and relationship drama going on in the collective right now. This is two. Uh, emotion, emotional, emotional turmoil. Woo, emotional turmoil. And what I'm feeling here is if you are having, I'm picking up on fights, I'm picking up on arguments, I'm picking up on aggression, I'm picking up on Leo energy. Um, uh, this is four. Uh, so if you're having problems with the people in your lives right now, um, maybe even the people closest to you, this is five, the relationships like your family, your friends, your significant others, um, this has everything to do with you growing and expanding as an individual. What I'm picking up on here is that for some in the in the collective, there are parts of yourself that are rising up from the depths. Like you, some of us, or some of us, yeah, some of us in the collective right now are dealing with the surfacing of some demons, some inner demons that you thought were completely gone. The fact of the matter is, however, I hate to break it to you, but the reason why this is coming up so fiercely for you right now is because you have done absolutely nothing to deal with it. Um, I, I'm not trying to be condescending. I'm not trying to be flippant. I'm not trying to be a bitch. But I'm being straightforward. What I'm feeling for some people right now is you're having some serious... Uh, what is it? Uh, you're having a serious personal crisis right now. Um, and it makes sense that these things would be coming up at this time during this Lionsgate portal because the Lion, as, as I've come to understand, the Lionsgate portal is all about self-love. I mean, it's during Leo season. It's while the sun is in Leo in the tropical system, uh, which is what our system was based off of in the very beginning. Well, not in the very beginning, but like in Babylonian days when this was really put into place, the system that we know it, the astrological system that we know it today was put into place during Babylonian times. And those and that time period, this is a total tangent, but that time at that time, we as humans lived according to the seasons. And it lined up at that time. Aries started, the, began the year, and that was that. Well, Aries began the agricultural year, so that's when we. That was the spring, right? So that's when the thaw happened. That's when you could start to plant new seeds and get ready to produce your harvest that you were supposed to harvest by the fall, right? And all of the the the, the signs related to that. But then since then, our planet has changed. The, well, the sky has changed because our planet has shifted on its axis over time. And so that's why we have differences between the tropical system and the sidereal system, the sidereal Vedic system, right? Okay, sorry, that was a total tangent. But this, the Lionsgate portal happens technically during Leo season. Okay, that's why I, I think that's a big reason as to why it's called the Lion's Gate. But Leo is very much about self, about the self, about self-expression, about self-love, about a self-appreciation. Okay, that's why Leo energy can often be so incredibly selfish, so incredibly full of itself, because it's self-oriented. This is the fifth sign in the zodiac, and by the time you get to this fifth sign or the fifth house, it's all about self-expression and having fun authentic self-expression. So what I'm picking up for some of you already without even having any cards, you're having a, uh, uh, an, identity, an identity crisis. But you're having this identity crisis because there are certain aspects of yourself that you, I literally just heard that you forgot about. But my sassy ass wants to be like, you thought you forgot about it. And in some cases, this was pretty devious. This part of yourself decided to say, okay, you know what? I see what you're doing here. I'm going to fall back until the moment when you least expect it. And then I'm going to come raging through like a bat out of hell. And then you tell me you're going to forget about me then. Okay, bitch. You just watch. This is Leo energy too, y'all. Leo can be vindictive. Leo can be spiteful. Shit. 
And sometimes, most of the time, I would say, eh, I don't, I don't even want to say that. It depends on the situation, the circumstance, and the scenario. But sometimes Leo can be like that for a very, very good reason. Leo can also be fairly smug. Every sign has its positive and negative aspects. I'm not trying to bash on Leos. Y'all know I love you. I, I mean, in the sidereal system, I'm a double Leo, okay? I'm an Aries sun in my natal chart, at least in, this, in the sidereal system. I'm an Aries sun, a Leo moon and rising. In the tropical system, I'm a Taurus sun, Virgo rising, still a Leo moon. So I've got that Leo energy going, going for me no matter what. I love y'all, but I also get it. But the... the Identity crisis. Some of you are actually dealing with an identity crisis right now, but it's ultimately a good thing. If you take advantage of this situation, if you take advantage of this moment, instead of just pushing it all away, and I understand it's a big old mess now. I mean, it's even more of a mess now than it was had you dealt with it before, but we're not even going to talk about that because that's neither here nor there. It doesn't even matter. You're in this moment now. You have the opportunity. Know how to, know how to, know, <laughs> no matter how messy things may be for you right now, you have the opportunity to heal it and grow from it. So take it, okay? It may take you a while to clean the shit up, but damn it, you better take it now. Because if you don't take it now, it'll just be pushed back until the next time or the next phase, and it's going to be even messier at that point, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. Let's get into these cards. What messages do you have for the collective please spirit at this time? What messages do you have for the collective please spirit at this time? What's going on for the collective right now? <laughs> okay, that's interesting. Um, I can't remember when this came out last. But you have strategy, but then you also have that with caring connections. But what I'm feeling for the collective is this caring connections energy. This is the balanced and harmonized union of masculine and feminine within you. Whatever it is you're going through right now that seems volcanic, which is another energy that came out yesterday in the in the reading surrounding that channel message, the promise of a new day. Check that out. But whatever is making making you volatile, whatever has been making you volatile. Or currently, whatever is making you volatile at right now, like whatever is coming up for you right now that is really pushing your buttons, that is triggering you hard body, there's a method to that. There's a method to the madness. There's a strategy behind it because it is influencing you to cultivate this caring connection with yourself. I, whomever is going through this right now, I want you to pay very close attention to how angry you are to how sad you are, to how disappointed you are, to how rejected you feel, to how neglected you feel. I want you to pay very close attention to that because that is definitely a cry, a cry for help from an inner element of you, most likely from your inner child. Like if you find yourself having an extreme tantrum right now in ways that you have not had, a, you, ha you have not had an episode like this since you were five or six years old or some extreme shit like that. You know what I mean? Like maybe, okay, maybe you were a teenager. I don't know. But you haven't had a temper tantrum like this in a long time. That's your inner child. And instead of turning around and playing that typical or what we've come to understand as typical parenting in this generation, in this lifetime, of um, children are meant to be seen and not heard. You're being immature. I'm going to yell at you until you stop, until you go away. I'm like, like all of that shit, cut that. Because that is exactly what has driven you to this point to begin with. Instead of being a forceful parenting figure for yourself, be a loving, caring, and compassionate figure for yourself. That's what we're trying to get to here. This, 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 this uh, uh, caring connections energy. Caring for yourself enough to recognize when you need love and nurturance. And some of you are acting from the programming that came from parents, which came from their parents, which came from their parents, and so on down the ancestral line, right? And that is, do as I say, not as I do. I'll give you something to cry about. Blah, 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 this, that, like that kind of energy. You know what I mean?
that energy of like for certain, especially for like um, people of color, especially like Caribbean people, um, as soon as the child starts to show any sort of sadness or starts to cry, you want pow pow? I'll give you pow pow. I'll give you something to cry about like that. I just heard for some of us rediscovering the parenting situation. So some of you may be regressing to when you were a child and focusing on how your parents treated you. Also, compassionately understanding how their parents may have treated them if you were did not weren't completely aware of them. Like if you did know your grandparents, you may be aware of this. But then even being compassionate to it going and years and, and decades and generations down the line, like right? But then rediscovering that and reparenting yourself. There is a method to this. There is a method to the madness strategy, and it's all having to do with cultivating this caring connection with yourself and then ultimately with others, right? Okay, let's see. What other messages do we have for the collective here, please, Spirit? What else do you want to talk to the collective about today in this reading? Okay, good. I'm going to leave it there. You have the sixth chakra at the bottom of the deck, Archangel Metatron. This is all about seeing. Seeing through the obstacles. Seeing clearly. Okay, the sixth chakra represents your third eye. Your third eye is your energetic, is your energetic perception, is what gives you the ability to see through the lies, to see through whatever, to see the truth behind something. And what you have with that here is victory and patience. So literally, you guys, this is all about seeing how you can cultivate a better caring connection with yourself, which will ultimately translate into a caring connection with others. This is why we focus so much on the self here on this channel and not necessarily on the external circumstances, unless it's necessary, unless it comes up for discussion, because your relation to your external reality, how you relate to it, how you resonate with it, what you find manifesting in your external reality is directly related to your internal reality and also directly related to your, your relationship with yourself. So if you're not aware of certain things that are within, consciously at least, if you're not consciously aware of certain things that are, of certain judgments that you're holding within yourself and certain ways and certain and situations that you have not come to terms with within yourself, that is going to re be reflected and, and in your relationships with other people, right? So the strategy here, the method behind the madness is us seeing clearly how we can cultivate this caring connection with ourselves, okay? And then to soothe any sort of fears, spirit is, uh, soothe any sort of fears or, or, or trepidation or anxiousness, anxiety, spirit is saying have patience because victory is at hand, okay? So for, spirit is bringing me back to whomever is having a really tumultuous time interpersonally right now um this is all oh shoot now i now i lost what they were saying with that but they were bringing me back to that because that's how you're going to cultivate this new balance within yourself this also this is the patience card this also can be seen as the temperance card okay there's victory coming here and you're being given you're being shown a way through the community for some of us, right? You have the community here, which can also be the Three of Cups, and then you have the Four of Swords or Rest and Rejuvenation underneath that, and then you've got Storm Warning. And then you've got the Second Chakra. The Second Chakra came through in one of the Patreon readings that I did for the, for the uh, Lionsgate Portal. If you're on Patreon, it's the reading titled Lionsgate Portal, Topping It Off. And that's where, and that, and then the message even came through yesterday in the reading that I did, pro the promise of a new day. It's all about healing your emotions, healing your emotional body, healing ways that you've been fragmented in your emotional body that are causing some extreme, re extreme reactions to things. 
But the only way that you're going to be able to heal that, defragment yourself, is by going within and facing what it is you need to face. Whatever it is that's coming up for you. Okay? Discrepancies in the ways that you love yourself. This is us recognizing sixth chakra, recognizing through our interpersonal relationships, community, what needs to be healed, and then allowing ourselves to rest and rejuvenate, to meditate on it, to get clear on it, to maintain a stability, a stable, a stable energy as the healing chaos happens, storm warning with the second chakra, okay? Okay, guys, I want to get into some tarot now for this. I'm going to use this one. The Revelations deck. Yes? Excellent. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. All right, five shuffles here. One. Two. Three. What's up, spirit? <sighs> Hold on, guys. Okay. We're going to get clarity here. I want to start with strategy and caring connections. Yeah? Okie dokie. So what's going on with this, spirit? What kind of clarity do you have for us, for, this, for the collective here in terms of these energies? Stop right there. Okay. Good. So overall energy, you do have the Ten of Swords. So this may not be that comforting for you guys, I, I, what it feels like. Um, with you guys, whomever this is for, with the energetic state that you're in, the energetic turmoil that you're experiencing right now, the emotional turmoil that you're experiencing right now, I mean, you're looking at this Ten of Swords energy and you're like, yeah, gee, great, okay, it's coming to an end, but that doesn't change how I feel right now. I get it. But understand that the situation is about to come to an end or it's reaching an end point, okay? You have the Three of Wands here with the Ace of Pentacles. Uh, and then you have a number of cards, or only two, okay, you have two cards that have fallen face down. But this is the point of why you're going through this right now. Because what I'm hearing is, how do you want to proceed? You're being provided with a brand new opportunity to change your direction or maybe get into a stronger alignment for yourself or to really question what it is you are working towards, what it is you are putting momentum towards, what it is you're cultivating momentum towards, what it is you're preparing for. For some of you, even though it's the Three of Wands and the Three of Wands represents um, preparing for something or continuing to follow through or following through with a choice that you've made, right? It's still, this Three of Wands and the Ace of Pentacles feels like a reset. Because with the Three of Wands, you're either gaining vision into what it is you've been cultivating, what it is you've been preparing for, or what it is you've been moving forward with or forward towards, and what the Ace of Pentacles with that is saying is, this is preventing you with a new opportunity to change what it is you are manifesting or what it is you are preparing for or what it is, whatever you are putting momentum towards for some of you. For some of you, this literally feels like I'm changing things up and I'm preparing for something new or I'm cultivating energies towards something new here. And that's specifically because you are recognizing the turmoil, the negativity, the destruction of whatever it is you've been working towards. And that's all because you did not see it before. You see it now though, okay? Two more cards here, they've fallen face down. Excellent. You have death with the queen of swords. So that's, and so, so, okay. So that's why I'm feeling like this energy for, 
And maybe now, maybe I'll say for those of you that are really resonating for this, maybe this is more of a universal thing because that's really what I've been feeling here. What I was feeling here is this is a reset. The three of wands to the ace of pentacles consciously on in the forefront of your mind, on the surface of the energy, this is literally a reset. This is literally you being provided with the opportunity to change what it is you're working towards. Planting a new seed, uh, 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 planting the new seed of a whole new plant altogether, right? Like that kind of energy. And then you have death with the queen of swords as the underlying energy here, the energy that is underneath the surface. Death, transformation, queen of swords, what do we need to cut out? No holds barred, no, no, no uh, discussion, no deliberation, like no, 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 no. Straight up and down. What needs to go, what needs to stay. This does feel pretty black and white. Uh, when it comes down to taking action in terms of what needs to be cut out or and what it is you're switching your focus towards, that is black and white. But the element of trying to figure that out is not black and white at all, okay? It's, it's a mix, it's a jumble, it's, it, you have to, you really have to work with it and work through it to figure out, to come to an understanding, to figure out what it is you need to do so that you can do this, go through this transformation. So like I said, the actual action of making the cut or making the decision or going through the transformation is black and white. Because by the time you get to the energy of, okay, this is where we're going, there's no, uh, there's no room left for argument. There's no reason for argument. There's no reason for deliberation. There's no reason to hear any more, hear any more arguments or see any more evidence towards the fact. Okay? That's when it becomes black and white. Either yes or no. Simple. But in the process of getting through that and understanding that and getting to the place where you can say yes or no, that's not black and white at all. Okay, I wanted to make that very clear. All right. This is good, you guys. This is very, very good. Let's move forward. I want to I want to look at patience and victory here for the collective. Yeah. All right, kids. So please, spirit, what is what messages do you have for the collective here in terms of patience and victory? How else would you like to clarify this, please? Good. We have another element of what's on the surface versus what's underneath the surface. Excellent. Overall energy, you have the Ace of Cups to the Page of Wands, you guys. All right. So what this is saying here, victory is coming through. Patience and balance is here for you. And then victory is coming through because of this sense of self-love. Ace of Cups. The Ace of Cups is representing that energy of you finding a level of love for yourself that what I'm hearing is you've never experienced before. You weren't equipped for it at the time, but now you are. Or now you're getting into that space or now you're preparing to be equipped for that. Ace of Cups to the Page of Wands. The Page of Wands is an energy of re-identifying yourself. Right. I see the Page of Wands as the minor arcana version of the Hermit, because often the Page of Wands, the Page of Wands is also my midlife crisis card in some situations. It's that moment in life where everything changes, including your alignment, including your sense of self, and you are embarking on a brand new. You're embarking in a brand new form of expression, which is so in alignment with this time period. Leo season. Leo is the ruler of the fifth house. The fifth house in astrology is all about self-expression and playfulness. And Leo is so expressive and so playful. But this is about expressing who you are. I want to say who you truly are, but for some of you, you're not quite there yet. You're just still learning how to express yourself in a way that is different from how you were programmed. Yes, it's a little more authentic, it's a little, a little more towards the realm of a, a level of personal self-expression, but it's not fully there yet because you're, you're slowly creeping your way there. You're getting more and more, as time goes on, you become more and more comfortable with a letting a little more of yourself shine and then letting a little more of yourself shine and a little more and a little more and a little more and a little more. And before you know it, 
You're this bright supernova of straight up, unadulterated, nothing but pure you, right? That's beautiful. But it's this Ace of Cups energy as your overall energy here that helps you get there. That, that catalyzes you, that starts you on that path because you are finding a way to love yourself so much that ultimately your ego doesn't give a flying fuck what other people have to say about it because you are just straight up you and you love every aspect of it. That's what we're moving towards here. Okay. Now, with this victory and patience, you again have two car two sets of cards. One set is Oh, uh, it's on the surface. The other set is beneath the surface because that's face down. On the surface, you have the Eight of Cups and you have the Star. So you may not know exactly which where you are going. Ugh, sorry, hold on. Sorry about that. I wanted to handle that before I started trying to talk through all of this. So for some of you or for whomever this is resonating for, it feels like you don't exactly know where you're going, how you're gonna get there, how long it's gonna take to get there, okay? But what you know is, at this moment, it feels right to leave certain elements, something, to leave something behind, Eight of Cups, in favor of something better, off in the distance in the future, the star. And there's a hell of a lot of faith involved in this. And for some of you here, or maybe a, a good number of you, it feels it feels like this type of energy where you're just kind of throwing your hands up in the air and be like, you know what, fuck it. I, fuck it. I've been floundering around like this for God knows how long, and ain't shit changed, ain't shit happening. At this point, I don't give a fuck. I'm just going to move on. Because it's what I've known I've wanted to do, what I felt like I wanted to do for the longest time, and I've done nothing but resist it, and all that resistance has brought me is more pain, more turmoil, more strife. And at this point, I'm going to love myself enough, Ace of Cups, to say, I don't want to be here any longer. Fuck it. I'm walking away. In the hopes that's, that, that the universe will lead me towards something better. And that is exactly what is happening here. Underneath the surface. Excellent. Yes, damn it, you guys. Underneath the surface, you have the Ten of Wands and the Six of Swords. Exactly what I was just saying. Fuck it. I'm done here. I'm not doing this shit any longer. Because this has done nothing but hold me down, uh, but create more turmoil, create more pain, create more strife, this, that, and the third. Like, I'm done with this. Underneath the surface, this is what is going on for you. This is why you have that victory, and this is why you need that patience. Because underneath the surface, you're releasing yourself of the burden, and you're moving forward. Ten of Wands, Six of Swords. On the surface, you've got the Eight of Cups and the Star. On the surface, you have the Star. I mean, at one point, uh, uh, or, I mean, like, in some cases, if you had the star underneath the surface, okay, that would be great. That would be nice. That would be cute. But having the star on the surface, to me, feels like you really have a level of faith that you're moving forward with here. Like it's in the forefront of your mind. And for some of you, and here you go, there's the method to the madness. For some of you, you were needing to be pushed to this point where you have given up all forms of resistance, all forms of fighting against what it is naturally you know you need to be or you feel you need to be moving towards. There's the method behind the madness for some of us. Spirit needed to push you to this point where you will finally just throw your arms up and surrender and say, all right, spirit, or all right, universe, wherever I'm meant to go, let's do it. Because I'm done with this shit. beautiful. Let's close out this reading. And I would actually like to get some oracle guidance for us from the oracle of the unicorns. Yeah? All right, cool. I want to give this three shuffles. One. Two.
Alrighty, kids. Closing oracle guidance, please, spirit. There it is, right there. Look at that. Right off the bat. Prosperity. A gift of money is on its way. Your income is increasing. Manage your finances with love. But this doesn't just feel like uh, money. This feels like prosperity on a soul level. The experiences you are having at this time are literally liberating your soul. And that's going to translate into you being more prosperous, whether that be financially, monetarily, business-wise, or whether that be in your creative pursuits, or you just prosper on a soul level because you're releasing the burdens that have held you back from that prosperity that have literally been blocking the, your God-given right to abundance and prosperity. We all have it. It's our birthright. But the layers that we accept, the layers of conditioning that we accept in life through society and social conditioning and all that kind of stuff often work against our level or our connection to the prosperity and the abundance of the universe. And so we lose track of it. We lose sight of it. But then once we start to rediscover ourselves and clear away all these layers, that's when our prosperity can really start to flourish for us. Let's read through this. There we go. This unicorn brings news of a financial blessing. A period of good fortune is opening up for you. If your flow of money has, has felt blocked recently, this is a sign that abundance is returning to your life. If you have been working towards an increase in your income, it's a sign that your breakthrough will be happening soon. Let go of any worry or impatience, as this will only slow down your supply. Instead, imagine the money you desire is already in your bank account and feel the way you would feel if, if you already had plenty to spend, save, and share. Let yourself feel relaxed, relieved, happy, grateful, and excited, regardless of the numbers in front of you. Trust that these good feelings and positive expectations will help activate your prosperity more than any fear will. As you focus on your new financial reality, follow your guidance on taking action, whether it's organizing your accounts, asking for a raise, or creating a new product in your business. Work on clearly, I'm sorry, work on clearing any limiting blocks or beliefs about wealth so you can create a clear channel through which funds can manifest. The divine is your source of financial prosperity. It is time for you to open up your flow and receive. Excellent. So there you have it, guys. I'm going to leave it there. Uh, it's so crazy how morning coffee, and now that I'm not necessarily doing morning coffee every single day, these messages are so freaking long because we have so much to talk about. I love it. Anyway, I hope you guys have a fantastic day. I love you all so much, and I look forward to connecting with you again for our next cup of coffee very, very soon. Yes? Excellent. Take care. Mwah! Bye. <laughs>